Kia ora guys, Bird here. Welcome to episode 2 of Thomcraft 4 add-ons, season 2 of my Thomcraft Let's Play occurring here in the same world that I did in season 1, so we already have a researching area as well as a whole bunch of other stuff you can see just there. There's like a magical forest that we've been growing behind there as well. So we started the first episode off by introducing the mod to the add-on, sorry, Thormic Tinkerer by Pixel Pix. I've looked the name up now, and it has a bunch of cool features. I mean, we saw in the Thorminomicon in the last episode, there are a whole heap of things in the new tab that the the mod adds, the add-on, sorry. <laughs> I'm probably just going to keep saying mod and add-on and whatever. But we researched two items last time with the Helmet of Revealing and the Wand Focus of Ifrit's Flame. We made the Ifrit's Flame... Uh, want focus last time and we found out that it's not actually that great of an item but i did see one suggestion in the comments or just a, a comment in general sort of uh, uh, that gave me a nice idea to, to perhaps try chopping down some trees with this thing so let's quickly head outside while well, we've still got a bit of daylight i just have that watch on me just so that i can see what time of the day it is at all times it's really convenient uh let's you know let's probably just keep it nice and local so if i do that no so that commenter was wrong huh dub <laughs> looks like you can't break wood with this thing after all so yeah it looks like it's only working on earthen materials it's a bit so yeah it's it's even more useless than <laughs> what we previously thought yeah it's not that great of an item honestly it looks cool though the wand focus on the actual end of the wand there looks pretty awesome Let's go ahead and put that away. And if you have some careful eyes, you'll also see that I also made the Helmet of Revealing off camera as well. I've yet to try and put this thing on, so let's go ahead and see what the character model looks like. Wow. <laughs> That's actually kind of interesting. I haven't actually just worn a bog standard uh, helmet before, so I'm not sure if the uh, the frame around the back of the head there is representative of what's on the just the Thormium helmet. It probably is, but... That thing does kind of look interesting. <laughs> Basically what it is, I think I pretty much guessed right. This is a sort of an early game item. Uh, it's not as good as the Thormium Fortress helm that we have here in the Artifice tab that you can make. You, so you get your, basically you get your Thormium helmet, you in, infuse it, and then you infuse it again with your goggles and revealing to make the super item. Basically, yeah, I don't think this is quite as good as the last one, so we will be taking that off. But let's just quickly check with it. I've been doing a bit of work here off camera as well on the mana farm. This area over here is new. <laughs> I took some of the air, air, sorry, and aqua mana beans that we have, and I've bred them together. And sure enough, we've got some tempestas beans coming through. This is the only way to get tempestas essentia in the game is to uh, cultivate them through mana beanage and basically what I, what I did is I had uh, eight aquas along here like this I had eight aires on this side and then in the middle I had a checker pattern of air and aqua and yeah that's obviously worked we've obviously got like four tempestasses here there's the, the rest are yet to go through we're probably going to get Probably like 12 or so by the time this is all grown up, which is going to take a while. I'm out of Erebo essentially at the moment. Going to have to throw some more cacti in there. But yeah, um, in future for what I want to do with this is actually... Oh, that's aqua. That's interesting. Hmm. But yeah, what I want to do is sort of more of a checker pattern of having the, uh, you know, aqua air, aqua air, aqua air like that instead of having a straight line of one, a straight line of one, and then a checker pattern in the middle. I think a uh, checker pattern throughout the whole thing is probably going to work a little bit better. Might increase our yield, but yeah. We've gotten a decent yield out of just this small little uh, 8x3, 24 thingamajobbly, but yeah. Oh, there's also one other thing that I wanted to do with these items as well that we've already crafted from Thormic Tinkerer. Let's get inside the focus pouch and get the Ifrit's Flame Focus back out. Throw that on the ground and follow rule number one of Thorncraft. <laughs> Scan Stan! <laughs> I just love saying that, so let's go ahead and research this guy up. Plenty of awesome aspects in there, and let's get the Helmet of Revealing as well. Let's throw this back on so that we can see stuff. That just seems to work like your normal uh, Goggles of Revealing, so that's awesome. Great early game item, but we've kind of passed it already. So let's go ahead and uh, throw that in, ch in a chest, basically, and let's get this uh, back in the focus pouch just by the lazy way. Oh. Like that, there we go. And throw this in a chest somewhere. Sure, right, right there. We've got some crimson armor right there, very awesome. 
Right, so what we're going to be doing today is probably just a little bit more research, if I'm honest. <laughs> just going to break the ice a bit with uh, vanilla... Sorry, not vanilla. <laughs> vanilla Thorncraft. With, um... Man, my brain, what's going on? With Thormic Tinkerer, goodness gravy, it's... I need to get used to having the mod installed, if I'm honest. So let's get the Thormonomicon back down. Did I just put that away? I think I did. Let's get down to the... Thalmic Tinkerer tab, and let's see what else we have to research here. We've got these two new wand foci right over here, but we did a wand focus last time, so uh, let's focus on something else. We've got this file right here. Gaseous. Illumine. Bring out. Bring bright out of sight. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a research note for this. This sounds fairly interesting, actually. It might be exactly what I need, if I'm guessing correctly. So this is made up of Lux and Ayr, a fairly simple one. So let's go over. We should just need to do something like uh, Tenebre would be fairly good. So if we do something like that, then we go Paraditio and Wakwas. Oh, those don't connect to each other. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. We might need to just work around this a little bit. But perhaps it's Wakwas that needs to be right there. Tenebra, yeah, so this isn't going to be as straightforward as I thought, but we should still be able to pull through relatively easily here. I think what we might just do is the fairly basic approach, if I'm honest. Let's just do that, probably. So if we go Winenum, uh, Peraditio, throw this over here. Like that, that works. And then we can go to Aqua, and then uh, through Weaktus, pretty much. Let's see, aqua, aqua, way at the front, bird, way at the front, like so, and get around if we can. No, we should actually just need to go Tempestas, and that'll work. There we go. Oh, and I've run out of ink <laughs> right on time, too, but let's get this out and go ahead and fill the scribing tools that are in here up with some of the ink sacks that I have handy, because I know that this happens a lot. I've had to refill a couple of times now. Just go ahead and throw that back in the table, be a tidy kiwi. Alright, let's go ahead and learn about Gaseous Illuminae. Whatever the heck this stuff is. Let's find out. Whoa! <laughs> that looks like some awesome nitro right there. So we unlocked Gaseous Tenebre. Okay. And we unlocked the Hyper Energetic Nitor. Whoa! <laughs> that sounds awesome. Let's go ahead and read about what we just learned about the Gaseous Illuminae. You have studied the intricacies of the light and have found out a way to create completely invisible light by infusing a file with the raw light. Wow! This file contains a concentrated extract of gaseous illuminae that can be released through a right click and will spread relatively fast in the nearby area, lighting it up. That is awesome! <laughs> so you take yourself a standard glass file, 10 air, 16 lukes, and 8 more tools, and you get yourself a gaseous illuminase, and that's what you use to light stuff up. So it's like an invisible light source. I'm guessing it's like the things that the arcane lamp uses. A lot of the lights that are over here use arcane lampage, like way over there. You can see we don't have any torches. And most of that's probably, well, honestly, all of it's being fueled by this tiny little arcane lamp right here. They're a great thing to have around, uh, really tidy up uh, lighting in your base, keep the area nice and clean and tidy and not having torches all over the floor. Kind of yucky. <laughs> but yeah, let's see if we can go ahead and make one of these because there's a whole area of the base over here. I actually need to equip these. I unequipped them because there's a little bit of a bug where some... I've had it in the past where uh, things that are deleted in the baubles inventory slots here. We've got an area over here that's like completely dark. So we do need to get these gaseous illuminates that would definitely help out in terms of uh, not having to waste so much stuff on arcane lamps. But yeah, let's go ahead and just recap that recipe for us, please. Uh, Air, Lux, and Motus. They're not the cheapest things in the world, but I do have the Spare Essentia, I believe, in my system. Let's have a look. Got the Motus. Um, I'm tempted to try and use the Requester system. I don't think we've used this on camera before. And I think we have at least a full jar of everything. We do. So let's go ahead and try out my requester system here in Season 2. We're going to need three jars, and we're also going to need pretty much like this. Let's see. We're also going to need these as well, so 
get those guys out in the wand of equal trade. There we go. So the first one that we're going to need is Ayr. Now let's have a look at what one there is on these conveniently placed signs. And the Ayr, where is that? It's wood and it's over there. It's already wood. So go ahead and open up Ayr and then go ahead and request some. Should just need to open that. And that should be good to go. We should be sucking out Ayr. It should eventually pop in here. Here it goes. Very easy. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, collect some of the Essentia from here probably because, you know, this is just going to take a, a decent couple of minutes to fill the rest of these jars up, or maybe about a minute. And so we'll be right back once I've got some Essentia. And with that, the Maltus Essentia has been collected. Let's go ahead and pick that up. I've also already put the other Essentias over here already. We're going to try and make as many of these as possible, which when you follow the maths according to the recipe, that's going to be six glass files. Uh, per basically full jar. So let's go ahead and enter it here. Oh, I've already got a bunch of iron in here. I was making some thormium before for the thormium helm, so let's go ahead and get some gaseous alumina. Oh, baby. <laughs> That's literally what it's called, isn't it? That's the first one. Oh, we're only going to be able to make four, aren't we? Yeah, because it requires 16 lukes. Man, these things are pretty expensive. I guess while the rest of those are crafting up, we'll go ahead and follow rule number one of Thorncraft. Scan Stan <laughs> with the thermometer and just some basic aspects. I had a look in the Thormonomicon. There's a little bit of a trick if you guys don't know. You can come here to the Alchemy tab, I believe it is, and right here, I believe, you can go ahead and come over here and you can have a look at these files of Essentia and you can tell if you've discovered or not discovered some of the aspects just by letting this filter through and it'll say undiscovered aspect times eight. <laughs> In which case, you've got some aspects to discover, and that's how I worked out, uh, even just playing in vanilla, how many aspects that we needed. So, uh, a full jar only gets you four of these, because the looks is pretty expensive. If you had a full jar of that, uh, there'd be like, what is it? Six, I believe, is what I did my original maths on, and then they'd only use 32 mold tools. So that will need to go back into the Essentia system at some point, but now we have ourselves four gaseous luminae. Hopefully these things are going to be pretty decent, because holy crap at that expensiveness. Let's head over here, over to this black area, and get these things a whirl. Let's see what happens. Bunk. Okay. That is literally an invisible light source. <laughs> Does what it says on the tin. Oh, it's not 100% invisible, isn't it? There's a little bit of a lighting effects coming off it from what I saw just before. If we stick around, will we see any more? I'm not seeing any more. Maybe that was just something as it's being plonked down. Right. Okay. <laughs> kind of cool. Let's go ahead and head over to these. I'm basically just trying to put these in the darkest areas possible. Right there is fairly good. And we're probably going to need to try and put one here as well. <laughs> they make a cool little popping sound when you put them down. We're going to need more of those, but we're out of Luke's essentially. Luke's is fairly easy to come by, actually, isn't it? Because I can get that out of torches. How much do I have left in my essentia system? Okay, only about one and a half jars. So that was pretty much up to topped off. So we will need to get some more Luke's and stuff if I want to go ahead and use more of that. Well, anyway, that's the gaseous illuminate. Fairly useful item, I must say. Man, the frame rate is tanking right now. It's always low around the Essentia system. <laughs> too much good stuff. The goodness is too much. <laughs> Let's go ahead and head back to the research area to get a higher frame rate. Man, down to like 15 frames right there. We want to head over here and we want to get ourselves something else discovered here today as well. It'll be fairly nice. Head back over to the Thormic Tinkerer tab. Do we want to try one of these things? Let's go ahead and uh, branch out a little bit. Let's try something over here. We've got the Transvector Interface. Not affiliated with N-U-U-U. -U -U, whatever the heck that is. Or we've got the Talisman of Remedium. This one's only a purchasable. I think I'll go ahead and get this one. It kind of reminds me of the... One of the things that you could get in Thorncraft 2. I think this one has sort of like kept you alive. Anyway, this one's purchasable for Tucson or one auto and one Winanum. So let's go ahead and pick it up. The Talisman of Remedium. So right off the bat that unlocks two new items. The Ethereal Platform. Oh, okay. And the Cursed Spirit's Blade. Wow. <laughs> now it's a purchasable as well. Those two are purchasables. Right, let's go ahead and read about it. That's not 
exiting the Thormonomicon won't help the hood. So, the Talisman of Remedium. You have studied life and the body and found that through the application of magic, you can protect yourself from harmful outside influences by redirecting these effects to a construct. This talisman will dispel most harmful effects on the holder and keep them on itself, taking damage. It will remove some effects stemming from warp at an extreme durability cost. To enable or disable this ability, one would shift right click on it. As expected, it only works whilst enabled. It must be worn in your amulet slot to take effect. Okay, you have to have it equipped in your bauble's inventory. Righto. So this one requires an ender pearl, four smoky quartz. Okay, so the smoky quartz is used for some recipes here as well. That kind of makes sense. That looks really cool. <laughs> and the gas tier, pretty. This is kind of hard to come by. And Nitor, they can make that on mass. Normanus, instrumentum, sano, and Weaktus. It's an instability moderate as well. I'm not quite sure what this means. Um, it, I'm, it's kind of a little bit confusing what it says here, but what I think it means is that if you have it on you, warp will just, the warp events won't happen, is what I'm thinking this means. I think so. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can make this thing. I can't remember the smoky quartz recipe. So that's four nether quartz and some charcoal or coal. I do have a decent backlog of that stuff, so let's go ahead and make a decent amount. I think I have some more uh, nether quartz hiding around in some of the chests that are around here, but if not, let's just go ahead and do that. We're going to need two of those. I've got a whole bunch of coal blocks around here somewhere. Where are they? Down here. Here we go. <laughs> Five stacks of the things. Holy crap. That's a lot. Let's go ahead and head over to the crafting area. Oh, this, the, the reason that this is spiking like this, by the way, uh, for those of you who might be a little bit newer to the series, is because I've got some magic mirrors underneath this platform, and those things require, if you give them ordo, then they will be a lot more stable and run faster and stuff like that. So that's why that spikes like that sometimes. Anyway, that's the smoky quartz. Let's go ahead and follow rule number one of Thorncraft. <laughs> Scan Stan. Get ourselves some portentia. Very nice. Just a single piece of portentia. Okay. What was in a single piece of quartz? Have I scanned quartz yet? So let's go we you sand portentia. So we actually lost a bit of aspectage there. Hmm. Maybe I would have expected a hint of ing yeast perhaps. Oh well, anyway. Let's go ahead and get the smoky quartz. We need an ender pearl as well, though, should be over here. Got a decent amount of those. Get a few spare. Oh that's gonna be the thing that's actually infused, so that should be okay. Uh, gas tears and neat water. I might not have gas tears here. If they are anywhere, they'll be over by my potion supplies. Yeah, here we go. So I do have two. You yeah, haven't done very much gas fighting. Okay, this is where I was expecting to find quartz, but no. <laughs> right, so all we need now is a hint of neat water, and we should be good to go for the recipe. I just need to check if we actually have all of the essentia requirements as well. Let's see, we've God, we've got enough Umanus, and we've got enough Sano and Wiktus, definitely. What other items did we need? Uh, instrumentum, that's a little bit low, but we've definitely got enough of that. Righto, so we should just need to get these things plonked down now in the Infusion Altar. If, if you haven't seen yet either, I've got my all my stability enhancers underneath the floor here, just to make things look a little bit tidier. You know, when people have all of their crystals and candles and stuff on the same level, it just it just doesn't look very tidy to me. So I did hide them underneath the ground. So that's four of those. This is going to be a sixer, okay. And gas tier Nitor. Right, so let's get those ordered up on the bar would be a good plan. Uh, gas tier Nitor. Right, oh, so four of each. Let's get to it. Put these guys over here. Just here and finish off with some neat ore. That should be good to go. Let's take off that focus and get going, guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure what's going to happen. If, if it's something to do with warp, we haven't had a whole lot of uh, warp problems here in our LP. I mean, I kind of artificially increased our warp count for a bit by making a whole heap of flesh golems to basically unlock the Eldritch tab. But I think pretty much all of that... Uh, 
temporary warp that we generated has faded off by now and I haven't actually had a warp event for quite some time where the screen goes black and says something's behind you or whatever. Haven't had that happen for a long time. Okay, we're getting through the items. Should be good to go now. Come on, everybody. There we go. There's our, our talisman of Remedium. So you have to shift right click it, right? It comes inactive. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of a nice little bell sound and it changes the look in your hand, but not the actual texture, mind you. Well, let's go ahead and put it on and see if anything interesting happens. Uh. <laughs> No, not really. I can't really see anything interesting happening there. No, don't press F1. Okay. Well, that's something to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and uh, scan scan that. We'll go ahead and shift right click it and try and scan the active version as well. Ooh, Exonimis and Spiritus Alienis. A whole heap of interesting things popping out of there. Pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and shift right click it and see if we can kind of cheat the system a little bit. No. Okay. <laughs> Does remember that it's active though. Anyway guys, that is it for the Talisman of the Remedium for now, and that is also it for this episode. I hope that you guys are enjoying the series of Thorncraft 4 add-ons. We are definitely blitzing through this through these items here. There's got, we're going to need to get a whole heap more of the um, gaseous Illumina if we want to fill out the rest of that area, so there's going to be a heap of charcoal making, but as you saw we actually have a whole heap of coal, so could be rel should be relatively straightforward to get all of those materials. So like I said, hope you guys are enjoying the series guys. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, kia kaha, and I'll see you in the next one.